and I lay my life before you. How I love you, Spirit, I adore you, and I lay my life before you. How I love you, how I love you. That was nice. Let's do, let Lord prepare me to be a sanctuary. Okay. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. That's lovely. A sanctuary is a place um, that's set aside to be holy for God. And when the God's people built the temple, they called that a sanctuary too. It was set apart. So we can make ourselves a sanctuary if God lives in us and we can have him come be with us and be a sanctuary. I think it's time to start now. So I'm going to open in prayer and you all can pray with me. Dear God, I pray that the words of my mouth when I tell the story and the thoughts of everyone's hearts, all of our hearts when we hear it, would be pleasing to you. I pray for your protection over us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, last week, Mr. Rodney told you the story about the temple. I have it right here. He told you how a wonderful king named King Solomon built the temple and how all the people gave their gold. They took off their rings and they gave it to the king and the king melted it down and the inside of the temple was all covered in gold. And they brought the best wood from faraway places to build the temple. And when it was finished, the Bible said it was filled with a cloud and they knew God was with them. Solomon, the king stood on the steps and he dedicated the temple to God and he said, God, we know you don't need to live in a house like we do, but we know that you're with us all the time. And we know that when we see this, we know that you're present with us. But we know you're too big for this kind of place, even though it's a very big place. But we remember you when we see it. Now, I told you last week I was going to tell you kind of a sad story and it's about the temple, and it's about the people of God. The temple was up on a high hill, and you could see it from far away. And when the people in Jerusalem saw the temple, I'll draw it in the sand. Up on that high hill in the mid middle of the city of Jerusalem, they remembered that God was with them. Mr. Dan, that doesn't really show up very well, does it? No, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make an outline with... Let's pretend these are the walls. They're really pencils. Because you can't see it when I draw in there. And pretend in the very middle is the temple. And that's Jerusalem. Now, all around Jerusalem on the other side was desert. And that's why we have to have the desert box with us. We need a little piece of the desert here to remind us of it. You remember from other stories about the desert that it can be a dangerous place. The wind can blow it and change what it looks like. And it can get really hot in the day. And it can get really cold at night. People don't go to the desert unless they really 
really have to. You might remember from another story about Babylonia. It was a big city in a big country far away from Jerusalem. And you might remember how Abraham led his people out of that place and followed the rivers until he came to Haran. And then God led him to this place and said, this land is for you. Well, here's a sad thing that happened. First, a country and a big army called the Assyrians came and they came across and their army surrounded Jerusalem and they broke some of the walls and they wouldn't let the people in or out. So the people couldn't go out to their farms to get food. And some of the people died because they starved to death. But then after a while, the Assyrians went away. But then another army came. It came from Babylon and it came to Jerusalem. And this time they did not go away. They broke the walls and they tore down the beautiful temple and they burned the whole city. Burned it down, that beautiful temple with all the gold, all of those beautiful things in it was destroyed. But not only that, they told the people that you are our prisoners. And they made the people march. The children had to go and their parents had to go. They left only a few people in the city. And mostly those were the people who were too old or too sick to walk. But they marched those people, all of God's people, through the desert. And the Bible tells us that when the people looked back at Jerusalem, all they could see was smoke coming up from it. The people were so sad that they took their musical instruments and they hung them on the willow trees. And they said, how can we sing happy songs? How can we ever use our instruments again? And they turned their happy songs into songs of sadness. And the army made them keep marching. The army told them when they could go to sleep. The tar army woke them up, told them when they had to get up. The army said when they had to eat. It was a very long journey and some of the people died on the journey. And so they were taken away. Of course, there were many more people than this. I just have a few to show you. And now they were in Babylon and they couldn't go back. The king said, you cannot go back. You have to stay here. They were trapped and they couldn't leave. Well, the king said, you can work now. Some of them had little stores that they set up. Some of them worked for the king. Some of them had to do hard work. They lived there. And after a while, they came to realize God was there with them too. God was with them all through that long journey. God was with them when Jerusalem was burned. God was with them in their sadness when they hung their instruments up on the trees. God was with them when the army was marching them along. 
God was with them in every place. They knew now that God was too big to stay in one place like the temple. They knew God was big enough to be with them wherever they were. And they remembered. They did not forget. The grown-ups kept telling their children about the stories of God. They told them the stories about Moses and all of the people who had been before them. They told them about God's faithfulness. When the people prayed, they turned in the direction of Jerusalem because they said, we remember. We remember who we are and what we're supposed to be. After a while, another king from another country and another army came in and took away the king of Babylon. And this king said, some of you can go back now. I'll let a few of you go back. So some went back. Some went back with a man named Ezra. And the first thing they did was to build up the walls again. Oh, let me get my pencils. Yeah, I'll pretend those are the walls. So you can see them. And then after a while, a few more came back. They came with Nehemiah. And they started to build up the temple again. And after a while, the king said, anybody who wants to can go back now. I'm not going to make you stay here anymore. But you know what? Some of the people stayed. Some of the people stayed right there because they knew God was with them there. And they knew that they could still teach their children about God in that place. Oh, I want to ask you some wondering questions. I wonder what you think the best part of the story is. What is the best part of this story? Or maybe I should say the most important part. I wonder if there's a part of sto the story that's about you. Is any, where are you? Were you here or maybe here? Okay, let's have response time. I wanna show you, you know, these pencils that I put in here, they're special pencils. They're made out of burnt wood. It's called charcoal. And so I was thinking today for my response, I'm gonna get a piece of paper and I'm gonna draw just in black because I want to think about all that smoke coming up from Jerusalem. So I'm going to draw with charcoal. Rodney Duke has a book. Here. Oh my goodness. Oh, would you like to see? Look, this is a picture of what it might have looked like long ago when Jerusalem was burning and it was all in smoke. Oh, now they didn't have cameras then, so they couldn't take pictures to show us. But that's scary. People are running and they're being marched away. So go ahead and do your response time. We just have a short response time and then we'll, we'll talk and pray again when you're finished. I'd like to hear what you did for response. Can I show you mine? I, okay. Yeah. I did a picture with my black charcoal oh my and I made it look all smoky. I wanted it to be smoky. So sometimes, you know, it is fun to just draw with black and um, that's the charcoal part. I'll show you a trick about it. If I rub it with my finger, uh-oh, look at that. My finger's all black now, I'll have to wash it, but then it smears it and that makes it look smoky again. But I was thinking, I responded this way because I was thinking about the sadness of all of those people leaving the city. 
and leaving their homes and all their toys and everything, all of that. Next time, Miss Kathy's going to talk to you about prophets. Now, prophets told the people of God that things like this were about to happen. They said, prepare your hearts. And so Miss Kathy's going to talk about prophets and what prophets do. And I think some of you may be prophets too. You may be. Well, let's have a prayer. First time we'll have an echo prayer. And then we're such a small group that we could all turn off our um, turn off the mute and we can just pray out loud for each other. And it will just be a big noise. But the thing is, God hears that noise and that's okay. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us. Thank you for the stories of your people. Help us remember them in our hearts. We pray for protection on all of those people that we love, that they won't get sick from this virus. Okay, let's stretch out our hands and bless each other. Are you ready? Dear Jesus, please bless my friends. Bless Mr. Rodney, Dr. Dan. Bless Miss Colette. Go ahead and just say your blessings. You can turn your mute off and say your blessings out loud. Bless Reagan and Libby and Kale. Bless Byron. Bless Nathaniel. Bless Ava. Bless Henry. Hmm. Bless Miss Kathy. Hmm. Bless Miss Jenna. Bless Miss Colette and Mr. Rodney. And all God's children said, let's say it together. Amen. Amen.